Remove the contents from the boxes, including the brackets, hardware, motor, wiring, and both swing arms. To install the rear bracket to the rear end of the trailer, measure down 24 and a half inches from the bottom of the end cap to the closest rivet in the rivet line. Then drill right in the rivet line with a 5 16 size bit. To mount the rear inner mounting bracket, first take the white spacers and place them between the bracket and the rear of the trailer so that the bracket isn't on the rivets. Then, using a self-tapping bolt, secure the bracket to the trailer, but still loose enough to place the second white spacer for the second bolt. Measure 24 and a half inches down to confirm that the bracket will be level, and drill the second hole. With the white spacer between the bracket and the trailer, use another self-tapping bolt and secure the bracket to the trailer. Repeat this process for the lower two bolts and the rear bracket is secure. Now for some trailers the catwalk will be in the way. In that case, you can go down as far as 25 inches to mark your drilling hole. Once the inner mounting bracket is secure to the rear of the trailer, mount the outer bracket with the sloping side towards the passenger side of the trailer. This ensures that the center of the pivot end is at the center of the trailer. Tighten the brackets together. With the rear bracket secure, the rear arm can be mounted. The rear arm is the one without any wires attached to it. Because the arm is pre-spring loaded, it's simply a matter of letting the arm hang down while you fasten it to the outer mounting bracket. On the front of the trailer, locate the center rivet line and mark the closest rivet to the 23 inch line. Because this trailer is flat, six rivets will have to be drilled out or the heads removed. The top and bottom two rivets will have to be completely removed and drilled all the way through. The center two just need to have the rivet heads removed. Because this surface is flat, no white washer is needed when mounting the inner mounting bracket. As before, when attaching the outer bracket, the slope side faces the passenger side of the trailer putting the pivot pin at dead center of the trailer. Note that on the inner mounting bracket, there are two bolt hole locations that can be used. Normally, the deeper ones will be used. The reason for the outer hole set is in case there is a ladder or other object sticking out of the trailer, causing a need to secure the outer bracket further away from the front of the trailer. As with the rear arm, mount the front arm, allowing it to simply hang down while attaching it to the outer bracket. These arms are spring-loaded, making it much easier to mount to the bracket. Once the arm is securely attached to the bracket, drill a 1-inch hole about an inch from the bracket to run the wires through the trailer wall. Install a rubber grommet in the hole to protect the wires. Carefully cut the zip tie securing the wires to the arm. Drill a hole in the outer bracket to attach the wire clamp. Screw the wire clamp to the outer bracket so that the wires are kept out of the way when the spring arm pivots. Make sure that you put the wire underneath the arm before attaching the clamp to the bracket. Then, the wire can be run through the wall of the trailer. The next step is to mount the control box on the driver's side of the trailer. Level the control box and mark the drill holes. Use the 5 16 drill bit to drill through the trailer wall. Use the self-tapping bolts and fasten the control box to the trailer. Drill a 1-inch hole around 3 inches below the control box to run the wires. Attach the grommet into the hole. Carefully cut the ties securing the wiring and feed both wires through the wall of the trailer. Behind the front of the trailer, locate where the first 1-inch hole was drilled for the swing arm. Towards the bottom of that panel, drill a 2-inch hole for the female plug and install it. Connect the wire from the swing arm to the little wires running from the control box. The longer wire from the control box hooks to the power cord coming from the female plug. With electrical tape, wrap both wire connections, then zip tie them in order to ensure that they remain connected. Bundle the wires together and zip tie them together. 
Back at the front of the trailer, drill holes to mount the female plug to the trailer. Use self-tapping bolts to secure the female plug socket into place. To mount the motor to the swing arm, slide the smaller collar onto the motor shaft. Then, slide the motor safety plate on. Slip on two bolts to the mounting plate before maneuvering the motor and plate onto the swing arm. Then, slide the bolts into place. Loosely fasten nuts to the bolts to hold the motor onto the swing arm. On top of the motor, attach the black negative wire to the post closest to the arm and fasten it down. Attach the red positive wire to the other post and fasten it down. Use a 10 millimeter socket to tighten the bolts and slide the rubber covers over both battery posts. Remove all the U-clamps that are holding the tarp to the roll tube. Next, remove the front roll return and unhook the rope. The front roll return is removed in order to add a pipe extension. Pull the roll return out of the pipe. Remove the crank handle from the back and rear cable return. Then slide the roll tube forward so that the pipe extension can be welded on. Slide the pipe extension onto the roll tube and weld into place. Let the weld cool before sliding the roll tube back into place. Then first attach the rear arm to the roll tube. Notice that there is still no tension on the springs. Make sure that the arm is parallel with the trailer. Slide on the 2-inch locking collar and tighten it down using the two set screws. Reinstall all the U-clamps. At the front of the trailer, cut the pipe extension by lining up the cut to the edge of the outer bracket. Set the 2-inch PVC pipe over the roll tube. Slide the aluminum insert into the roll tube. Next, the motor will be installed onto the roll tube assembly. Line up the motor making sure that the arm is parallel to the trailer. Insert the grade 8 bolt through the pipe extension and screw nut and push the motor assembly as far as possible and tighten the bolt down. Next, tighten down the motor bolts to the arm. Once the bolts are tightened down, use a 3 8 drill bit and drill through the roll tube and insert. Slide a bolt into the hole and fasten into place, making sure that the collar is on the insert, and tighten in the set screw for the safety of the plate collar. At the front of the trailer, remove the eye bolt where the rope for the front roll return attaches. Use a half inch wrench on the fastener. Next, set the PVC pipe so it rolls over the wind deflector on the front end cap by using self-tapping screws to lock it into place. This will protect the pipe during tarp opening and closings. The next step is to wire your tractor with the wiring kit provided. It's already pre-assembled, so all the wires just attach to the positive and negative posts. To activate the remote on your Sioux City Tarp electrical systems, remove the remote from the control box. Hold down the on-off button for between 5 to 10 seconds until the motor jumps. The remote is now on. Tap the remote up arrow for the tarp to open and down for the tarp to close. The remote can be stopped and reversed anytime. The remote will turn itself off after 10 minutes of inactivity. To turn it on, simply hold the on-off button again to reactivate it. There is also an operating switch under the control box to move the tarp up and down. Both control systems are amp controlled and will automatically stop when the tarp is completely opened or closed. With this last step, your tarp system is ready to use. If you have any further questions, please contact Sioux City Tarp at 888-258-6939. You can also visit us on the web at SiouxCityTarp.com.